Hello and welcome to this rather intimate review of the QNAP Guardian NAS Switch. I say NAS Switch, let's face it, one of the big pulls about this device that I talked about in other videos is the fact that even though it features a PoE switch inside as well as the NAS component, CPU, memory, PCIe ports and more, this device is still technically two separate devices that manage to run independently with their own um, a shut up, shut down, and the ability to have one turned off and the other third functioning perfectly, but at the same time, let them communicate. Now, I've already filmed my unboxing video, and today I want to give you guys a big, big close-up of a number of these components, so we can take a good look at how this device ticks. But, just like my previous video, there are a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, this device right now is not being filmed in my usual location. It's being filmed here at QNAP HQ, because stocks of this device are short shockingly limited. Secondly, this room that I'm in, I've never filmed in before, so it's pretty loud indeed, and it is raining because, you know, this is England, um, and at the moment you may pick up the slight echo and the rain in the background, so I apologise in advance if that is a factor throughout this video. Now, this device has also been set up for a number of software videos that are going to be on this channel in the next few days, featuring the NAS software, the Switch software, and then utilising the device in QVR Pro, QNAP's own surveillance software where this device arrives with eight camera licenses. I'm going to use this and a couple of Axis IP PoE cameras with this device to show you guys how it works with surveillance, QVR Pro, and if it's worth your data and your security. But without further ado, let's look at this device. So we've already done the unboxing, but for those that didn't know, this is the retail box here. It's massive. And this device arrives for about 250 quid, give or take, maybe two, I'm sorry, 550 quid to about 580, I should say. And that's without that. And there are two different versions of it. And that 500 odd quid is, you've got to think of it in terms of buying a NAS and a managed PoE switch. You can't think 550 pounds, give or take, without that for just a NAS or just a switch. You have to factor all of that in because you are getting a very good one of each of these combined together. Now, the device arrives with QVR, um, sorry, QTS 4.4.1 and that myriad of software. So you've got everything from multimedia applications in video station, photo station, music station and more. You've got to support a third-party media application as well, of course, Plex being a big, big one, which should perform very, very well on this device, and I've already purchased one of these myself, which I'm hoping will be used for the Plex video before the end of the year. But on top of that, you've also got um, better data management applications, such as QSearch, QFiling, and for the photographers, QMaggie, the facial and thing recognition AI powered cataloging engine, all the while with multimedia console running in the background, being able to give you very customizable and bespoke indexing and cataloging systems, and not just forcing you to put all of your directories in a preset location. You get to choose where your data lives, and then this device will index from those, not the other way around. On top of that, you've got a multitude of different backup strategies, such as obviously traditional RAID with the device arriving with two two and a half inch bays inside that I'll show you in just a moment and those two and a, two two and a half inch bays support SSDs which at that size and SATA are commercially available around 4 TB each or you can put two and a half inch um, SATA hard drives which are currently available at 15 mil height at about five or six terabytes. Now you can support JBOD, so just a bunch of drives. You've got RAID 0 where you combine all that storage or a RAID 1 where they're mirrored against each other. But that isn't the limitation of your storage. And the USB ports built into this device can also connect the hardware RAID expansion unit such as the TR002 and TR004, adding two or four more bays of storage per port so you are not limited by your capacity and with the added bonus that that external storage can be used as an external storage array or it can be brought in with the overall raid of this device all in one now the device itself is available now from the guys at span.com there should be links in the description and do check out the link to uh, NAS Compares, which has got a lot of the photography that's been taken about this device and lots more information on those specifications. And on top of that, on the switch side of things, we can take a good look at those PoE set settings, both in the article and in the uh, QVR Pro video too. Because that switch, it's a, there are absolutely loads of ports built into the front of this device. With these four ports here, 
uh, providing a greater power output because these are PoE++. So these four of your high density PoE items that require a little bit more power, not just your bog standard PTZ cameras, these are ones with enhanced security features, IP speakers, stuff like that. The rest of them provide 15 to 30 watt and they can be used with link aggregation. There's even a couple of SFP ports. So these are all copper 1GBE and these are SFP 1GBE, so fiber, that can be comboed together with those existing RJ45 ports. Once again, assigning port priority, link aggregation, quality of service and giving lots of performance benchmarks that you can access in the switch software known as QUNet Switch. On the side, we've got reset buttons and a power button that also assist in the device running independently. So say you've got a firmware update for your QNAP um, QTS NAS portion of this device, you can reboot that device and the switch will continue. Likewise, the switch, if there's an update for that or it's powered down or if there's a problem, the NAS will continue. On top of that, the NAS portion of this device can utilize the ports of the PoE using the network virtual switch software and assign ports from these to the NAS, which can be utilized for VMs or just reassigned with the virtual switch on behalf of the NAS. So there is a whole host of stuff available for this device, and I'm sorry I'm all poked in here, but I thought this device should be center stage. I've already removed the screws on the rear of this device. So if we remove the lid and take a good look inside, uh, just before I do, forgot to mention on top of that you've got these usb ports for that external storage yes but you can also use them for other supported usb peripherals keyboard video and mouse ups's wireless dongles and more and in fact this lan port here is dedicated to the nas device and that nas device there that it's connected to will allow you to directly interact with the nas device as well as the labeling and control of additional ports via the switch software connected to them. Now there's an HDMI port which is utilized with those USB ports and in a number of QNAP's own software to allow you to create a standalone solution using it for Linux station, container station, virtualization station, QVR Pro or simple multimedia playback and a whole host of apps available in HD station on this device. All of them through there, but just remember HD station has its own dedicated memory. And I've got a whole video coming up just on dedicated memory when buying your QNAP NAS, and this is a very good example. But if we look inside this device, sorry about that banging noise, we can take a good look at this device. Now, I'm gonna try and label these things as I go, but it's worth mentioning straight off the bat that when you buy this device, you won't get this card. These are two up here dedicated PCIe 2 Gen um, 2x2 ports. These allow you to install PCIe upgrade cards that will add 10 GBE and, grain and greater to the NAS portion of this device. On top of that, it gives you the ability to add SSD cache with one of those um, SSD cache cards from QNAP. And although at the moment the NAS, um, sorry, the switch isn't able to take advantage of the PCIe slot completely, currently what it can do is utilize it for things like the wireless access card, which is the card I've got installed. Because when I do my um, uh, my uh, video with this device for surveillance and the software overview, I needed this device to be wireless. The result was that even though I had my private network that was PoE enabled with PoE switches, by adding the QNAP um, QSW 22A100AC card, I was able to create a private wireless network with four antenna around the back covering a huge surface area of multiple frequencies and allow that to be part of the QNAP Guardian Switch network, but you can install your own cards. At the bottom, we have got the base for your media. Now, once again, because I'm I've already utilized this device for two of my three videos, the SSDs are still inside there, but those two bays will allow you to install even one SSD or hard drive if you choose, and remember, you can expand with those TR002 and four expansion devices. In the middle of the device, we can see uh, here, a memory port and a memory port. These memory modules here are four gig each. This is the eight gig model. There are two different memory versions available. And those two memory um, uh, modules there are SODIMM and they are DDR4. On top of that, you've got this giant heatsink here with a big old fan in the middle 
and that fan there covers the Intel Celeron chip inside. It's a J4000 series CPU, and it is the J, um, J4115, which can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz per core, over four cores. It's even got HD graphics embedded too, for you guys out there that want to take advantage of transcoding, or are going to utilize this device with higher connection speeds over 10 GBE or more with that card, and need to edit graphical files, this will work within that environment. Now on top of that, we have got the power coverage and a separate controller for all of those network ports there on the bottom with a separate power conduit feeding into this 375 watt PSU that supplies power to both the NAS and those PoE ports. Now a number of you have commented on previous videos that having one device that has one PSU means if that PSU goes, you lose access to both. And of course, that is true. Um, I'm surprised there isn't a dual PSU version of this device, but I can see in terms of efficiency, power consumption, and more, there's a lot of reasons why this is still a viable option. And on top of that, if you are going to utilize a UPS in your business environment, that negotiates this issue. But for what you're getting in terms of access, and independence from having multiple devices spread out and spreading your network load, having it all in one area, both physically and electronically, has enormous benefits. And I think that overlays the idea of a single PSU. And also, you're doing your bit for the environment, Captain Planet, but we'll see. But this has been my hardware overview and review of the Guardian Switch from QNAP. I, you know, I don't know another thing to tell you other than I love this device. It's easily one of my favorite devices of the year, and I hope you think so too. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments, but do stay tuned for the software overviews where we look at the NAS software, we look at the QNAP switch management software, and QVR Pro running on this PoE switch. Click like if you enjoyed this, click subscribe if you want to watch those videos, and I'll see you next time.